Are you getting better as a photographer? And how do you know? Are your photos better than they were five years ago? And who's the judge of that? There's one skill set that I think really takes street photography to another level. And it's something that I'm always trying to improve on. I'm making this video as sort of like a brain dump of some random ideas and thoughts I've had. And I'm gonna share some personal experiences and I'm sure there are people out there that can relate on this topic. How do you know you're getting better as a photographer? Now the obvious words like practice, experience, all of that comes to play. But there's something else, and I think there's one specific skill set that improves as you get better as a photographer, specifically a street photographer. Now, after looking at some of my favorite photographers and the greats that established this genre of street photography, I think it's pretty clear and pretty simple that it comes down to this one concept. You may have guessed from the title of this video, but I think it's about the ability to notice and the photographer's observational skills that make the biggest difference with street photography. When I first got started with street photography and I figured out that the bokeh on an 85mm lens looked amazing, or the leading lines on a super wide angle lens looked fun. You get creative with long exposures and you just take simple photos, but you think they look good. We kind of bring mundane moments to life. That's like the beginner stage of street photography. You realize that you have the ability to use a great camera and therefore take great photos. But those great photos can be taken by anyone. It's about the photos that take a level of observation that I think are really special. Now those fun, creative, long exposures, 1.4 bokehlicious photos, those leading lines, those wide angle shots of moody London streets, there's a common thread. And that common thread is that they do well on Instagram. I ended up only shooting those Instagram banger moments and therefore limiting my observational skills and limiting the potential of the environment and the scenes that I had around me to only taking, like I said, those Instagram bangers. The more I looked at the work from the greats, the people that really established the genre of street photography, it was less about making a scene look good and more about them observing and noticing moments that were already interesting. I think really good street photographers are able to notice and observe their environments in a way that nobody else can. And then result of that, get photos that nobody else will. All right, enough guru rah-rah talk right now. Let's just get real and practical with a personal example. So here's a photo of what looks like a street entertainer, but obviously he's on a break. Maybe he's just having his lunch, but he's still got his extended legs on. I forgot what they're called, but they make you like 10 foot or 12 foot or whatever. His legs also match well with the tripod legs of the paintings in the frame. We've got the guy on the left putting something in the bin. There's a color match there between what the guy's wearing and the street entertainer's wearing. When I took this image, it isn't that special, but I realized I was starting to observe and notice things that I didn't or wouldn't have noticed two years ago. But just by looking at really good street photographers and the type of photos they're taking, I was able to apply a similar level of observation to this scene. A guy with peculiar legs right next to a shop window with other tripod legs. A very strange coincidence. Nothing special or outstanding about this image, but it's just an observation that I was personally pleased with. And this tells me that I'm progressing just a little bit because I know I wouldn't have noticed that scene three years ago. I would have walked straight by it, just like everyone else who was on the street that day. I've been thinking about this for the last 12 or so months and trying to apply it with my own photography. And the easiest way I can explain it is when I see a photo that really impresses me and my reaction is, how did they do that? What are the chances of that happening? I can't believe they were able to take that. 
that tells me that their ability to notice and their observational skills are very good. And the better someone is at observing their environments, the better the photos they manage to take. It's hard to measure if we're getting better as a photographer. There aren't any obvious rules or guidelines that states you're leveling up, therefore you're getting better. It's all subjective. Whether you like my photography or not doesn't tell me if I'm getting better or not. Sometimes the only feedback we get on our photos is the amount of likes it gets. And this is kind of like the darker side of the street photography community where your ego is attached to the amount of attention your photo gets. And therefore, that's how good you think you are as a photographer. So that's not telling me anything about my skills as a photographer. That just tells me what the internet likes to look at. And that's one of the reasons why I'm more interested in looking through photo books than I am looking through Instagram. When you open a photo book, you're able to take a proper look in your own time at images selected by a photographer without being spammed by 10,000 other things that are happening on your screen. So how do we get better at this observational thing I'm talking about in this video? Now we can start with miscellaneous items in the street, getting practical now, we can look at people's hats, people's clothes, any color themes you notice, any noise, any expressions, anything that people are carrying, anything that's happening in the street that is a little bit different or at least catches your eye, I think that's a good place to start. But aside from the practical technical aspects of taking photos, one of the best ways I've found for myself to improve, so this might help, so I'll share this, is to ask why we're taking the photo and then afterwards ask why you like the photo. And then you're gonna narrow things down and figure out why you were drawn to a certain scene and how you can do that again in the future. And then I think it comes down to practice. So asking that question, why do you like this image, is a much better conversation to have with yourself than how did I take this image. The practical side of whatever shutter speed or aperture you decided to use is far less important than what you were thinking when you decided to take the photo. Someone's work I want to credit to here is Eric Kogan. He takes photos of moments that are so well noticed. They could be very mundane, everyday situations, but his perspective on those moments is outstanding. Matt Stewart is another fantastic example of powerful observational skills. I mentioned his book, Think Like a Street Photographer, in my previous video, but his style definitely comes to mind when talking on this topic. Another one of my favorite photographers right now is Josh Edgoose, also known as Spicy Meatball on Instagram. His observational skills are fantastic. I love the humor, the coincidences, the juxtapositions in his images. I think he's just definitely got the eye for it. So I get excited about street photography for many different reasons today than I did four or five years ago. And to put it simply, I think that's what progression is. I think if your opinion and your thoughts and your feelings and the things you're interested in change over time, that's a good thing. So uh, I'm actually interested to see this video in five years time and see if I was just chatting shit or if I actually agree with myself or not. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about, the power of observation and street photography progression. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below, if you agree, if you don't agree. And uh, yeah, I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.